You know, I've been doing a series right now, let me pull this over, called The Weapons of Our Warfare. And this is actually a, a 200 and I think 20, 30 year old family crest of a member of the church. They let me borrow it, but it's actually his family crest. And, uh, you know, they ha- have, it's been hanging on the wall for hundreds of years. Um, but the weapons of our warfare are, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, you know, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we've been learning about this in this series on warfare. And, and we're learning what, we learned what God's weapons are in the very first one of the series. We learned what the weapons of God are. There are, what did I give you? A sheet of paper had over 50 different weapons on it. I hope you guys are studying that. If you're not, you really should, okay? I don't know if we had any more of those or not, but, you know, if you want one, just go to the info booth after the service, and uh, we'll, we'll have some out there for you. I'm pretty sure we got a little stack left over somewhere. You should be studying that. You need to know what your weapons are, all right? You got some, Wayne? Anybody want one? Raise your hand. You, you might be asking for trouble. You may not have enough. So save the last one if we need to make print more. But anybody else that, that didn't get one that would like one, Wayne's handing them out. You can just wait till he gets over by you and lift your hand. Uh, I'm going to keep moving, though. You know, we've been learning about uh, the, the second message that I did was called the arsenal. And we learned that we all have specific weapons that are ours. God has created us uniquely, and he's designed us for spiritual warfare. And we have giftings, things that you do that I don't do, and things that you guys do that I don't do. And we have these giftings and it's part of our arsenal, our personal weaponry that we're supposed to do battle with. And then we talked about missions as warfare and, and we had missionaries and we talked to everybody and we we're sending people into the world to go into the world and to win people for the Lord. That's important stuff. And then we talked about the armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and, and the shield of faith and all that cool stuff. And you know, that was the basic armor. You know, we all get the basic armor. But some of us, you know, inside of us, we get the nuke. Some of you are nuke buttons. Ready to destroy darkness at any moment. And you know, the nuke button people are the ones who get attacked the hardest. The enemy can see you. He knows your value. He knows what your potential is. And he's trying to steal and kill and destroy you. Because he knows what you could be. And how badly you could destroy his kingdom and the work that he's trying to do. So he's coming at you. But here's the bottom line. If you're coming to Lighthouse Church. (laughs) We're using the weapons every week. We are using the weapons of our warfare every week in our service. We're not playing around. We are not playing around. We do communion every week. Why? Because Jesus said to do it every time you gather. Why do, we, why do we do it every time we gather? Because I want to gut punch the devil every week. I want everybody to know who they are in Christ and be reminded that in Christ we have the victory. You've got victory. In Jesus, celebrate that in communion, right? Take communion. You you know you can take it home every day. Go buy yourself some grape juice and crackers. You can take communion five times a day. If you're in a serious battle, I'd be taking communion at least once a day. Just reminding yourself and the devil whose you are. And that no weapon formed against you will prosper. It doesn't say the weapon won't be formed just says it won't prosper will not accomplish what the enemy's trying to do with it we've been doing baptisms for we had three new converts get baptized today powerful you know but we're baptizing for healing water and 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 people getting delivered in the tank we're seeing incredible things we baptized over 70 people in three weeks and lisa is one of many testimonies that you heard today she's like i haven't felt this good in eight years. We need more of that. We need more of that. And why did, 
she get that victory? Because we pulled out a weapon and we began to, to, to shoot the enemy with it. Say, no, we're not going to put up with your garbage anymore. Right? So, uh, you know, we pray for people up at the altar. Some churches, would they don't do that. We do it here. Why? Because it works. It's a weapon. We're going to pray for you. The Bible says lay hands on the sick and they will what? Recover. So we're going to lay hands on you here at Lighthouse Church. If you get sick, you want someone to lay hands on you, you don't have to come to the front. You can call. We can do a private meeting. We'll baptize you in private. I'll come to your pool. I'll come to your jacuzzi. I'll, I'll go to the beach. I will find a puddle somewhere and baptize you in it if that's what we need to do. It doesn't matter to me. I will baptize you any way, shape, form that you would like to be baptized. You know, it's like if we can squeeze you in a cup, we'll get you in there. <laughs> Not going to baptize me in a cup. <laughs> Not even a jug. But we're operating in the gifts of the Spirit here at our church. We're, we're not playing around. We're preaching the Word of God uncompromisingly. You know, I get nervous sometimes with what the Lord tells me to share with you guys. I'm like, they won't come back next week. And you keep coming back, so I commend you for, you know, well, some of you, the people that didn't come back aren't here today, but, you know, <laughs> you came back. But last week, we started talking about satanic strategies. I don't rarely give the devil much pulpit time. I just don't think he deserves it, you know. We're, we don't, you know, we're not going to do demonic casting out demons in the service and all that. You need to get rid of a demon. Come see me. I'll get rid of that thing, man, in my office. Uh, you know what I mean? But this is God's time. This is where we worship Jesus. This is where we lift up the name of the Lord, man. You know what? But, hey, there is a time. To get delivered. It's just not while God's being glorified. But we will get you delivered. We've been talking about satanic strategies. And this week I want to expose the enemy's biggest desire to paralyze you. He wants you paralyzed. You know that, right? He wants you paralyzed. Today I want you to know the enemy wants you afraid. He wants you afraid. He wants you scared. He wants you not knowing where, where you stand in life and not knowing who God really is to you. And he wants you confused and, and, and wavering in all that you do so that you, when the time comes and the battle heats up, will fail because you don't know who you are in Christ. And see, that's the thing. In the last three years at this church, I have been teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching you who you are in Christ. And I've watched many of you grow tremendously and I'm very proud of you because you know, you know, the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come that we might have life. And the only way we're gonna have life is to stand on his promises. We've gotta know what the word of God says. We gotta get here on Thursday nights and, and fill ourselves with the word. We gotta get here on Wednesday nights and fill ourselves with the word. We gotta get here on Monday nights and fill ourselves with the word. We gotta get in our dining room tables and fill ourselves with the word. Right? It's important. So today I want you to know the enemy wants you afraid. What is fear? Let's talk about it. You ready? So we all experience fear in some way, shape, or form in our life, don't we? I mean, I've been afraid of, of, of things. Uh, you know, there's the big fears. You know, the, the big fear, like the first time you give your kids the car keys. That's a big fear for a parent. It's like, you know, we're just like, can't sleep. I can't sleep. The kids are out. They got the car. Uh, what are they doing? They're doing everything I did when I got the keys. That's why I'm scared. <laughs> They're like, freedom. And I'm like, uh. I have great kids. Don't get me wrong, but you know what I mean? I should be in faith going, God, you are my children's covering. You are my kid's protector. I can't protect them, but he can. He protected me. He got me through it. And I'm here today to tell you there's some tired angels. <laughs> from what it took to get me here. Very tired. It's 
true. But see, if we understand fear and how it works against us, the bottom line is this. You know, fear is trying to keep you from becoming who God's called you to be. It's one of his greatest weapons. He's trying to move us into foolish actions because of this thought that fear creates. You know, fear starts with a thought, right? So the Bible says, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. If we take every thought captive, then fear will not be able to get a grip on us because we will take fear captive at the thought process rather than letting the thought become emotions. Anybody here ever had an emotion? Hello. Everyone look up at me on this side. Anybody ever had an emotion? Anybody? Emotion? A couple of them? A couple of you? Emily? It's like, what are you calling me out for? I know Renee's had emotions. Right? But the, the emotions, uh, it, it comes from this strong, intense feeling. You get fearful and then you get this intense feeling that I got to do something. Or I got to go and I got to worry or I got to be in fear. And then in doing that, it tries to prevent you from doing something good from trusting God. What are you supposed to do when you're fearful? Trust the Lord. Scripture says, trust the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You're like, oh, my path's all messed up. I'm so afraid. It's because you're not trusting the Lord for your path and where you're headed in your life. Fear is the most common way that Satan attacks people. Most common. Every one of you have been attacked by fear in your life. At some point or another, some of you, you know, even before you came here today, the enemy was working you. Why? Because the enemy wants you afraid. I want you to be a little scaredy cat. You see, fear is a master spirit. It's not just like some little gimp demon running around, you know. The spirit of fear is a principality. It is one of the leading spirits that Satan has in his army. And if he can direct you with fear, you will become his. I did. You see, fear is the opposing force to faith. It's the opposite of faith. If you're in faith, you can't be in fear. If you're in fear, you cannot be in faith. See, God wants us to walk by what? Right? God wants us to walk by faith. And Satan wants us to walk by fear. You see the correlation? Fear is Satan's faith. It's like, I need you to believe in what I can do wrong in your life. I need you to focus on how bad I can make it for you so that you can give me entrance into your life through fear and I can make that which you fear come upon you. See, we, when we learn to live by faith and not let fear rule in our lives, listen to me, that's how we can live a fulfilling life. For the Lord. That's how we can step into and walk in victory every day of our lives. Because in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So what are you thinking of yourself right now? What are you afraid of? What are you allowing to manipulate you and to move you in a direction contrary to where God wants you to go in your life? I like to say it this way, where the mind goes, the man follows, women too. Where your mind goes, you're going to follow there. So we've got to take this stuff, this fear stuff, very seriously. I mean, I've seen people's lives totally destroyed from fear. Ruined. See, ministries destroyed by fear. I've been involved in ministries where fear kept me pushed down. 
because people were afraid of what I might become. It's real stuff. All of us, what are we creating with our fear in our lives? We're going to have to really look at this today because the bottom line is this. We as human beings, we're just suckers for the spirit of fear. He's like picking us off and we're just like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm just going to buy into everything. We buy into it. We really do, myself included. I'm not pointing any fingers, you know. It's What's that guy on the TV or something? Points at himself. See, the bottom line is fear, does, it's a spirit. It's a demonic spirit. It doesn't come from God. Fear is not of God. Because God is love, God is power, and God is authority. See, when you have a sound mind, you're not in fear. That's a key. We're going to come back to that. The bottom line is this. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. If you are tolerating fear in your life, your faith is being contaminated by it. They cannot coexist. You've got to abolish fear from your world. You don't have to live in fear. But you don't understand. I thrive on fear. I have to watch a horror movie every week. Right? None of you guys watch horror movies, I hope. Right? It's getting quiet. You know, they're one of the biggest fear breeders on the planet, you know. I mean, I can remember telling Jacob here, to take the garbage cans out to the road. He's like, it's 10 o'clock. You know, he was littler, not now. He would do it now because he's big and buff and, you know, he'll take on the chupacabra, you know, and snap its neck. But when he was littler, you know, he'd be like, hey, go take the garbage cans to the road. What? You know, I don't want to take him, take him out. I was like, go take him to the road. You know, and he'd be like, all the way out to the road, and he'd run back as fast as he could. You know, you know why, right? Because he took three steps, and he heard, fear is a learned behavior. The enemy's programming you with it every day. Somewhere along the way, you're being programmed. But fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? So you need, if you need more faith, if you need to attack some fear in your life, the only thing that you can attack it with that's going to be effective is the word of God. You're going to have to attack it with the word. Because here's the bottom line. You know, fear is, it's the opposite of faith. Think about this. Fear also comes by hearing. But it's, it's by hearing the words of the devil. Right? And believing the words of the devil. You know that it's impossible. The, the, the scriptures tell us that it's impossible to please God without faith. Do you know it's impossible to please the devil without faith? I mean, with, without fear. Without fear, you cannot make the devil happy. And guess what? I don't want to make the devil happy. So when you're in fear, you're giving him extreme joy. He's like, I got him. They're on the hook. He's reeling them in. The fishing ministry. Pull them in. You fall for, for, for Satan's tricks. Seriously. God's kingdom operates on faith and Satan's kingdom operates on fear. Do you believe me? So what does the enemy want? He wants you afraid. 
know the greatest fear that Satan can inflict on a believer? It's the fear that what God said in his word won't happen. Ah, oh, that's not true. That's a bunch of garbage. It's lies. The liar is telling you it's lies, <laughs> right? Let me give you an example. Philippians 4.13, we all know that one, real popular. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Anybody remember that one? Right? What's Satan's? Through fear says, no, you can't. You can't do all things through him. You have sin in your life. You're way below his standard. You cannot do all things. That's the lie. That's what, and it breeds fear. Then you're like, maybe I can't. Maybe I can't do all things. Maybe I'm in trouble. Maybe I'm going to fail. You see it, right? Satan says, that's not true. I'm here today and say, yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ. And he will give you the strength. If you're in him, you're a new creation. You're a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You're the head, not the tail. You're not defeated. You're victorious in Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus. You've been set free. Your mind's been purged. Your conscience is purged from every dead work so that you can serve the living God. You're forgiven. You're delivered. You're healed. You're set free. Everything this book says about you is true. The only things that are not manifesting in your life are the things that you fear are not happening or true yourself. It's his inroad. Do you see it? If he can get you to doubt, if he can get you to waver, if he can get you in fear, he can pull you off of the truth because the Bible says it will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Well, if he wants to keep you bound, then he's got to get you off the truth. Fear is one of the greatest tools that he has to do that. Look at Eve. Did God really say you can't touch it or eat it? He threw the little touch part in because she was probably holding it. You don't look dead. You're touching it. God didn't say they couldn't touch it. He said they couldn't eat it. He's lying, and then he gets them fearful. Fearful that they're missing out on something. Oh, he just doesn't want you to know the difference between the, tr the knowledge of good and evil. You see it. His trickery is always to build fear, to keep you from experiencing what God has already given you. You know you're not trying to get anything from God. He's already given you everything in Christ. If you are in Christ Jesus, God has given you everything at the cross that you will ever need to have a successful life as a believer. The only reason you're not experiencing some of the blessings that you have been given is because you're in fear. And you're doubting that God really wants to do it for you because you look at yourself and you go, I'm not worthy. So why would God do that for me? Because he gave it to you as a gift in salvation through Christ. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. It's a free gift. Grace is grace. You're either in it or you're not. You can't be like, I have grace today and then tomorrow, well, I sinned. I'm not in grace anymore. You got to settle that whole the sin's been dealt with thing in your life. Because all sin does is it breeds fear. Fear that God doesn't like you. Fear that God's not acceptable or that you're not acceptable to him anymore. And that's a lie. Jesus has set you free. He's given you everything that you need to live a godly life. But your fears got you running from the God that paid the price for you. He paid your bill and you're running from him. Thinking you owe him when he gave it to you. But we think we owe him. Like I have to live my life a certain way. I have to do this. I have to be a certain way or God's not going to be happy with me. No, he's the minute you accepted his son and the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. God's never going to be happier with you than he is in that moment. And his, his affection towards you is never going to change. In spite of yourself. 
license. It doesn't matter what you do. I'm like, what? That's a license to sin. No, it's actually a license to live free from sin. Right? You don't have to sin anymore. You can be free from it. You know? You can be free. Because the sin just creates the fear that God doesn't like you. But he does. We don't have to live in fear. So I want to ask you an important question today. You ready? Everybody look at your neighbor and go, here it comes. (laughs) What's motivating us to do what we do? What is motivating you to do what you do? (laughs) Because you're doing all kinds of things in your life driven by fear. A lot of you, myself included. And it's way deeper than you realize. I'm going to say way deeper. Our motivations have got to be renewed to the word of God. It's our responsibility to take this Bible and renew our motivations. Why do I do what I'm doing? Why do, why, uh, why do I get so upset when people cut me off in traffic? Because I'm afraid they're going to slow me down. I'm afraid they're going to create, they're going to make me late. When I left late to begin with. And that's why I'm stressed out. Fear is tricky. It's a little manipulating thing, man. Uh, And it's the little ones that get us. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, you know, big fear. No, no, I'm good, you know. But it's the little bitty ones that get you. It's the little bitty ones, you know. I like to look at it this way. Fear tolerated will contaminate your faith. Are you allowing yourself to put up with fear? Are you allowing yourself to put up with this fear thing in your life? It's like saying this, you know, is a little adultery okay in my marriage? Just a little, tiny bit. Is a little murder okay? Just a little. See, it's the little fears that get us. It's not the big giant monster fears, it's the little ones. I shared this example before in church, you know, I said, uh, and I handed out a couple of trays of brownies and people were chowing into them. And I was like, you know, I put a little tiny bit of dog poop in those brownies. <laughs> Brownie was coming out fast. You don't want a little tiny bit of any of that in your brownie, do you? So how, how do we want any amount of fear in our life whatsoever? Because fear is what's in the brownie. We've got to get rid of it, guys. I have anxiety. Ah, I'm depressed. Ooh, you're in fear. We've got to get you in faith. You've got to give up all that stuff. It will mess you up. Let's look at a story here. Job 1, 4 and 5. You got Job and his sons are out and they're having parties and they're doing things. Anybody ever worry your kids are out partying too much? Anyone? Just me? I'm the only one. You? You and me? We we the only ones? Okay. A couple of you? Thank you. Thank you. All right. So when his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And so it was when the days of the feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. He says he did this regularly. Man was in fear for his kids. I had to give my kids to the Lord. 
long time ago and just believe that God's going to get them where they need to be because he was able to get me where I needed to be. If he can get me there, you know what it took for God to get me here to this place? If he can do that, I believe he can do anything, especially for my kids and your kids. So Job thought his kids sinned, and he went out and he brought sacrifices for them. His motivation was fear, right? He was afraid of what they might have done. He was moved by fear, not by faith. The result of inviting fear into your life was catastrophic for him. He lost him. Job 3.25, for the thing I have greatly feared has come upon me. Fear opens the door for whatever it is you're afraid of to come upon you. You hear me? And what I dreaded has happened to me. Fear tolerated will contaminate your faith. You know, I like to look at Jesus. He was the perfect example, right? Let's look at him for a minute. Mark 4, 35 through 40. On the same day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let's cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. He was in the stern asleep on a pillow. The whole world's coming unglued, and where's Jesus? He don't have one little bit of fear in him at all. He's asleep on a pillow in a boat that's filling up with water in the middle of a storm with everybody screaming and rowing as hard as they can. And he's like, (laughs) out like a light, totally at peace. (laughs) They woke him up. Anybody ever woke somebody up? Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Some of you, in your fear, you've looked at God and you're like, I'm dying here. I'm perishing, God. This is too much. What is happening here? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and he, and he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, listen to this, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? When Jesus said, we're going to the other side, that should have been all they needed to hear. I'm here today to tell you, Jesus is telling you, you're going to the other side. You've been given eternal life. You're going to the other side. You have been sealed and set in motion as a believer, as a person of God, and his faith is all that you need to go to the other side. Do not look at the wind. Do not look at the waves. Don't look at the storm. Don't look at the people panicking around you in your life. Look to the Lord and tell the Lord, I'm with you. You said we're going to the other side. I don't care how I get there. He was able to walk on water and anybody with him could have walked on the water. It wasn't about the boat. Where was your faith? Does this make sense? How is it that your faith is so challenged in your life? God's word should be enough for us. We've got to settle these issues. If we don't know it, we can't throw it. Right? Faith and fear cannot coexist at the same time. What's motivating you to do what you do? Every day of your life, what's motivating you to do what you do? got to start breaking it down and looking at it in detail and going, am I in fear right now? Am I in fear right now? 
Am I in fear right now? And if you are, you've got to go to the word of God. You've got to find the scripture to combat that fear. And you've got to stand in the midst of that fear. And you've got to say enough. That is not my portion. We cannot tolerate fear anymore. We cannot tolerate it. I've got to wrap this up. So what do we do? We've got to face our fear. Face it. Somebody say face it. The thought of facing our fears might not appeal to many of you. But you're going to have to do it anyway. You can't just keep riding it and letting it rule and reign over you in your life. Because in Christ, you are able to face your fears and defeat them. 1 John 4, 17 and 19 says, Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. If you're in fear, you have not been made perfect yet in the love of Jesus Christ for your life. Does that make sense? So we've got to begin to find these fears and introduce them to the perfect love. His name is Jesus. How do we do that? We've got to acknowledge our fear. We've got to say, I'm acknowledging that I'm afraid, God. I'm coming to you in prayer. It's just you and me here. I am afraid. I admit it. I, I need help. Because most of us just like to pretend like nothing ever happened after a frightful experience. We're just like, I'm going to forget that ever happened. You got to acknowledge it. Because remember, fear is a spirit. You got to look him in the face and you got to go, no, no more. No more. I like to look at it this way. If you burn your hand on a hot stove, right? If you put your hand on the stove and you burn your hand on the stove, you're like, ah! Now, are you going to be afraid to ever touch a stove again? I'm never cooking again. I'm never going to heat anything on that stove ever again in my whole life, ever. It seems silly to say that, doesn't it? But that's what we do with fear. We, we get into a situation, we get popped with fear, and then we just totally throw the whole thing away instead of through wisdom through the wisdom that we find in the word of God, we come at fear and we go, okay, I understand you now. I don't have to be afraid of this oven. I just need to use wisdom when I'm around it and not touch it the way that it's not supposed to be touched. Many of you in your lives are actually running from your fear when you need to face them, you need to admit them, and then you need to stand and communicate with your fear and tell them who your God is. Joshua 1, nine. have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He's always with us. We don't have to be fearful anymore. All right, I'm closing. It's late. I'm fearful of you. If I go much longer. <laughs> so if you don't walk away with anything else, remember this today, okay? Remember this, 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see, the enemy's walking around like a lion, seeking whom he can devour, what is he looking for when he's seeking whom he can devour? He's looking for fear. He's looking for your fear. He's looking for your fear. And he's saying, you're fearful. I can enter into you. And I can be a lion and I can roar and I can take authority and I can steal your life and kill you and destroy you because you're afraid. But I'm here today to tell you that this is what the devil really looks like. He says he's like a roaring lion. But he's not a roaring lion because we 
serve the one true roaring lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And if God is for us, who can be against us? I will not fear because I believe in him. It's time to stop giving fear any place in our life. You going in, Jill? <laughs> Lord, we're just so blessed to be here. I just speak over everybody. If you're dealing with fear in your life, would you raise your hand? Any type of fear whatsoever. I'm afraid my bills aren't getting paid. I'm afraid the enemy's trying to kill me. I'm afraid of the dark. I don't care. Whatever you're afraid of, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I come against this fear. I take authority over it in Jesus' name, and I release you to be free of fear in your life. From this day forward, Lord, we supernaturally declare that you are going to help us to live a fearless life from the enemy. And we'll destroy his works in Jesus' name. Anybody say amen? Would you stand just for a minute as we baptize Jill and then we're going to walk right out of here, okay? So, all right, go ahead. Miss Jill. So what are you believing for? Come on. Washing away the things that are holding her down. Come on, you guys. Come on, we got bigger and better things to do. I believe it. I believe it. Amen. So, Lord, we just thank you right now. We just thank you for Jill. And I know she's saved. I know she's been baptized. But, Lord, we're going to leave some stuff in the water today. We are going to uh, take authority over this. We break every power of darkness off of her, every fear, every anxiety. We just call her yours. And we bless her right now in the name of Jesus. And uh, we're just so honored that she's here with us today. So go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It's like there's nothing behind you in there. You'll be all right. <laughs> it's done. It's finished. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Go with us and uh, be with us as we conquer fear in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to come out this Wednesday, Generational Ministries Night. <laughs>